Hi, everyone. Welcome to Red Monk Conversations. I'm so excited to be back with you. I'm Rachel Stevens. I'm a senior analyst with Red Monk, and today we're going to be talking about Jamstack. Jamstack is a topic that I am very interested in, and it's a trend that we've been following at Red Monk because it has some really interesting potentials to change development workflows for a certain class of application. And so today with me, I have Nevi Shaw from Cloudflare, and we're going to talk about what Cloudflare is doing with Jamstack. Nevi, would you like to quickly introduce yourself and tell us about what you're doing at Cloudflare? Absolutely. Well, first off, I just want to say thank you so much for having me. It's truly an honor to be here um, and chat with you a little bit about Jamstack. But I'm Nevi. I'm a product manager at Cloudflare on the developer platform team, um, where we focus really a lot on building different tools um, and applications to enable dev teams to uh, you know, go to market quickly with highly performant and secure applications. Um, and so more specifically, I'm the PM of a product called Cloudflare Pages, which is our Jamstack platform for front-end developers to build and deploy their full-stack applications. Um, and so underneath the developer platform team, we also have solutions for compute, storage, um, developer productivity, um, really with a big emphasis on the developer experience. Excellent. So I, I want to start, I definitely want to dive into what you're doing at Cloudflare, but I think Jamstack is a topic where people are maybe coming with a, a kind of wide variety of understanding of what this actually is. So let's start by just level setting with everyone and talking about what Jamstack is and why it's becoming an increasingly popular way to build applications. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I think if you're kind of in the developer space, you've probably heard of Jamstack before um, or heard of it. And I think a lot of times it's paired with, you know, cutting edge and revolutionary. Um, but when you think about Jamstack, actually, it's composed of three different things that have been around for a really long time. Um, that's JavaScript, APIs, and markup. Like, that's the stack. That's it. Um, we've been using these for years, right? Um, and so let's kind of dive into each of those things. So JavaScript, that helps create some really reactive web applications. Um, using libraries like uh, you know, React and Angular and Vue and things that we use all the time. Um, and then you have APIs, which are used for the data source and for user interaction. So if you need content from a CMS, uh, you can use a series of APIs to get info from Contentful or Strapi or Sanity or whatever CMS you choose to use. Um, and then the final piece of the jam is markup, and that's actually what provides the formatting instructions to browsers. So with Jamstack, sites are actually served um, as static HTML files and then are generated from source files like Markdown. And this is actually where you would use maybe a static site generator like Jekyll or Hugo. Um, and so when I think about, I guess, Jamstack and you know why it's so popular, um, I think it's just because it's simple, right? It's a light stack. Um, all you need to know and all your team needs to know is JavaScript, APIs, and markup, and that's it. Um, and so if you notice, when I was kind of explaining what the jam is, nowhere in that kind of architecture does it mention like heavy backends or setting up servers or anything like that. Um, its popularity really comes from the fact that there's no heavy lifting involved. It's really just writing code and shipping. Um, and so Jamstack really just encourages, you know, the use of APIs and other services to create more complex applications. Definitely. And I think the use of APIs is increasingly more common as we enter this world of more composable applications. And so the Jamstack model tends to fit into this, this new development paradigm, which is interesting. And as we kind of think about development paradigms, can, can you talk to me about how the workflow changes in Jamstack compared to traditional architecture? Yeah. So I guess let's talk about what the traditional kind of architecture was before the Jamstack, right? So um, in this kind of setup, you would have, you know, the developer, let's say I'm the developer, um, write code and ship the application to an origin server. Um, and then an end user, let's say, Rachel, you're the end user, um, you would request a resource from that server. And once you make this request, the server would do all of these computations um, and produce that required HTML for that resource. And then every time you request another resource, the computation are done again at request time. Um, and so this process kind of repeats over and over again, which is a lot of lifting. Um, so this architectural approach is okay, but Rachel, the problem happens when, let's say that you're in South Africa and I'm in the US, um, that creates a lot of like performance deficiency, right? Like you're trying to access my origin server, which is probably where I am, um, and that creates a lot of latency. Um, so most of the time, your customers are not where you are, like your end users are on the other side of the world. And I think that's really where the Jamstack comes into play. 
Um, so thinking about, I guess, the Jamstack architecture and how it is today, um, as a developer, you'll use maybe a static site generator, like I said, you'll write code for your website and you actually ship those pre-built files directly to a CDN or a content delivery network. Um, your CDN is then going to cache those files so that every time, Rachel, you request um, those assets, it'll come in a bundle. And all of the heavy lifting is actually done at build time. So then once the user requests a resource, um, every single time they request, a, they request a resource, you will just be given the entire bundle and no computations have to be done over and over again. Um, and then, of course, all dynamic functionality will just be handled via a site's API integrations. Um, so I guess just to sum that up, in a traditional workflow, the heavy lifting is done at request time, whereas in the Jamstack workflow, it's done at build time. Oh, that's an excellent summary. Thank you very much for that. So I would love to talk about like, so you kind of talked about like a global use case when you have like widespread users and you want to reduce latency, but can, can you maybe talk to us about some of the use cases that are good for Jamstack? And then there's times when maybe Jamstack is not such a good fit. Yeah. And I think this is a really good question. Like if you're thinking about should I use Jamstack? Is it right for my team? I think there's a couple of things you can you should take into consideration. Most of them being like, what are you trying to gain from Jamstack? What are the benefits you're trying to reap from using this new architecture? Um, if it's speed and performance, Jamstack is definitely uh, the go-to architecture, right? Like you have a CDN that could be extremely expansive or regionalized, um, but either way, your site is being closer, being brought closer to your users. Um, are you trying to achieve SEO benefits? Uh, Google just really their Google Web Core Web Vitals um, last year, and performance is a really big part of that. So with Jamstack, your sites will actually be ranked higher, um, and if that's something that's really important to you and your teams, like Jamstack definitely is a really, really good choice. Um, but I think in thinking about maybe when it's not such a good choice, or maybe I guess a consideration to take um, when thinking about Jamstack is like it's important to understand that Jamstack, although it simplifies the workflow and the architecture. Um, it's not a low code or no code tool, right? Your, your team still needs to be able to develop with JavaScript APIs and markup. So it's not like low tech. Um, it's just a, a kind of simplified architecture. And so you might want to ask yourself things like, is my data accessible in API form? Do I have an API driven architecture? Um, so, and if, if the answer is no, it may be a little more complex to move to the Jamstack. Um, I, I would say that like, the options and the and the possibilities are very limitless with Jamstack. So there's always a way to, to, to use um, Jamstack to kind of build what you want. And in fact, we do have a lot of customers that come to Pages and come to Cloudflare and say like, hey, like this is my setup. I do really want to use Jamstack. And sometimes it's just a matter of starting that new. Um, but then again, sometimes there's a way to like tweak their existing workflow um, to take advantage of the architecture. Gotcha. So, so let's, let's dive in a little bit to how Cloudflare is implementing Jamstack and maybe just a little bit about Cloudflare Pages. Yeah. Um, so Pages is Cloudflare's Jamstack platform. Um, and what does that actually mean? Um, well, so let me just start by saying like when we started thinking about this Jamstack trend, when we heard of the Jamstack trend, we were thinking like, how can we build this platform and also bring speed and scalability and security, which is Cloudflare's bread and butter. Um, so we really wanted to harp on, you know, three things I think that really sets us apart from um, like the rest of the Jamstack world and other platforms. Um, Cloudflare is, like I said, Cloudflare's core and like key competitive advantage is our CDN, um, our content delivery network. I think the statistic is we have like 250 plus um, cities where our network lies, which is massive. Um, and the statistic that everyone else really loves, I wrote this down because I didn't want to forget it. Um, it can reach 95% of the world's internet connected population within 50 milliseconds. So if you just think about that for a second, um, that's insane. Like all of your end users will get their site if they're connected to the internet within 50 milliseconds, which is lightning fast. Um, and so when we look at this architecture, it involves a CDN. We have a CDN. We were like, yes, like let's, let's, let's make a Jamstack platform. I think in terms of security as well, um, you know, we don't just want your sites to be performant. We'd love for them to be performant, but we also want them to be secure. And we have all the goods to make that happen, right? We follow the latest protocols. We have SSL out of the box. Um, and, you know, we, you can integrate with WAF and DDoS and all those other products that we kind of offer at Cloudflare um, really, really easily. Um, and then I think the one thing that is really, really important 
to us when we were developing pages is we wanted to make it available to anyone and everyone, whether you're a hobbyist developer or a small business developer or an enterprise developer, we wanted everyone to get the same cost benefits. Um, and so we created this really generous free tier that gives you unlimited free seats, unlimited requests, unlimited bandwidth, um, all of those really great features that you might have to pay a lot more for on different platforms. But for us, we just want you to understand Jamstack. We want you to use the platform. We want you to get comfortable with it because um, we think it's like a really good thing for the internet. Um, and so I think those three things are the are the main kind of way that we're kind of revolutionizing the Jamstack market. Yeah, it sounds very much like a holistic platform view of all of the things that exist around your Jamstack platform as well, which is interesting. So yeah. talk to me about the developer experience of using Cloudflare Pages, because I think that's one of the benefits that people are really seeking with Jamstack is having having this um, easier workflow for development. So let's talk about how you have um, envisioned that. Yeah, I think I think I love using this line. I write it in all of my blogs. Whenever I talk about pages, this is what I say. But um, I think the Jamstack workflow lets developers focus on what they do best, which is writing code, right? Um, in the old days, maybe a developer had to set up a server and like do all these other like computations and things and just make it very complex to just set up a website when really it doesn't have to be that hard. It should be very simple. And I think that's kind of what Jamstack is trying to achieve. Um, so... Um, I guess using the Jamstack, a developer can use some sort of some sort of CI tooling to build their application and choose a deployment platform and a CDN. And there's all these different components that work in Jamstack. Um, at Cloudflare, we kind of wanted to simplify this even more and create this one stop shop so that a developer can just come to our platform, you know, build their site, deploy their site and have it go live. Um, and so to do that, we actually had to observe what developers were using, what tools were they using and a Git source platform was the biggest one. So that's where we started. Um, we were able to connect GitHub and GitLab to our pages platform so that on every Git commit, on every Git push, um, we handle the build as well as the deployment to our CDN. Um, we have production and preview environments. We have um, deployment URLs so that you can actually share those URLs with different members of your team, product managers, marketers, what have you. Um, and they're protected behind a product called Cloudflare Access. Um, so our goal was really to create this collaborative um, platform that helped developers just focus on their code while also being able to kind of circulate and um get their versions of their site in front of the people that who like in front of the stakeholders, the people that, you know, matter the most. Um, and so we wanted developers to have the security and the feeling that, okay, pages will take care of the rest as long as I just get commit. Gotcha. Yeah. So a Git based workflow that then automatically kicks off builds and then creates shareable collaborative links. Very cool. Exactly. So can, can you talk about how um, people can incorporate dynamic content into their site? So I, I think um, we, we kind of talked about the A part of Jamstack with APIs, but I, I think that the Cloudflare view of dynamic content is probably um, a little bit more involved than that. So I'd, I'd love to hear how you're doing that. Yeah, I think it's a really great question. I think um, there's a lot of deliberation over the classification of websites that fall under Jamstack, what does and what doesn't. Um, and I do think that maybe in a year, in a couple of years, perhaps Jamstack as a, as a name it may not exist because a lot of people think, okay, Jamstack, you're, you know, sending pre-built files to a CDN and they might think static. Um, but for right now, I think Cloudflare, you know, we don't necessarily think that's the case. I think we're really interested in using the Jamstack architecture, but also bringing on dynamic content so that, you know, what you can build on pages is, is, is limitless. Um, so, you know, yeah, we did talk a little bit about how you can add dynamic content through the use of APIs. Um, in addition, last November, we actually just announced Pages native support for Cloudflare workers. And if you're not familiar with Cloudflare workers, it's our serverless functions offering. Um, and workers has been around for, I think, a couple of years now. Um, but with native support, a developer can essentially drop their functions into a slash functions folder and then deploy them alongside their static assets in the same kind of Git workflow um, that we all know and love on GitHub and GitLab. Um, and so the, the benefit to that is now your functions are available on our entire edge network. Um, and so I think Cloudflare is really challenging, um, you know, that myth and assumption that by using the Jamstack architecture, you can only deploy static sites because now with these edge functions, like basically anything is possible. You can connect to other tools and, you know, use some of our storage products like durable objects and KV. 
Um, so I think it's just a really exciting kind of stepping stone into the future. Fascinating. It's really fun to watch what Cloudflare has been doing. You guys have kind of been on a tear the last couple of years, last year in particular. And so it's great to have you on and hear what you all are up to. And thank you so much for just sharing um, some general knowledge about Jamstack. This has been great. Can you talk just a little bit before we wrap up about just kind of where you see the future of the Jamstack going, where you see the future of your products going? Is, is there anything you can kind of share in terms of what you think comes next? Yeah, and I think I think we touched on this a little bit, but I think the future of Jamstack really comes from the kind of dynamic functionality we can add, right? Dynamic functionality is what makes websites complex. And, um, you know, there's a lot of dynamic content in general. We want to be able to enable developers to have like data, um, authentication, like different things like that. Um, and I think functions, like I said, the, the feature that we launched in November is a really big stepping stone to give developers all the tooling that they need to, to build out whatever they want. Um, and so I think at Cloudflare, we already have a range of products that you can integrate with today. Um, and I think as a PM, I really want to be able to take that to the next level, right? Cloudflare, if you go to the Cloudflare dashboard, um, there's all of these different products at the top that you can generally integrate with. Um, but I think there's a way that we can create even better first class integrations with these products. So Cloudflare Registrar, Cloudflare Access, Cloudflare Images um, to do a lot of different things from more security um, to more optimization. Um, and all these things are really within our reach. So I guess that's more from an internal perspective and some of the products we can integrate with internally. But I think a really a bigger goal that we have is for pages to be a platform that really meets developers where they are. Um, so we want to be able to integrate with different frameworks, different tools that are kind of in the community and being used by the community, right? We don't want to be a platform that says, hey, like what we says, what we say goes. Um, we want to be able to empower developers to, to choose how they want to work and then be kind of a helping hand for them to, to deploy their sites. Um, while taking away kind of that heavy lifting and all of, you know, the complexity that comes with deploying and maintaining a site. Um, but I think there's a lot of really exciting things in store, both, you know, within Cloudflare and then also just in the community in general. Um, one of my favorite parts of just being a PM on this product is there's a beautiful community of people who um, care about the product, who care about Jamstack, who love like building websites. Um, and I've met a lot of people through our Discord channel, through Twitter, who have all these opinions and have feedback on, you know, the space in general. And I think um, it's just a really exciting space to be in right now. Yeah, it sounds like it. I, I think you have your work cut out for you just yes. about the changing world of the JavaScript framework alone. Like there's there's ever ever changing things for you to tackle in the landscape oh, around. Absolutely. It never ends, but in a good way, it never ends. <laughs> Well, Nevi, thank you so much for taking the time to come chat with me today. This has been wonderful. Rachel, thank you so much for having us. And yeah, definitely watch out for all the great things coming up with pages. Thank you.